at the end of the day is all about relationship okay when you see relationship with your customers relationship with your prospects relationship with your internal team members okay at the end of the day we are all humans right and what drives us is our emotions okay so the core attribute i would um, say for us to be successful and grow is that when we work with our customers we really put ourselves in their shoes what exactly is their pain what exactly is driving them to come to us to do something what needs to make their life better okay. so that is our fundamental way of really getting and understanding where they are coming from and what we need to do to win their trust what we need to do to win their business and we don't look for a more like a soft market we are always looking for a long term becoming their trusted partner in the journey Welcome to Growth Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Today we're going to focus on leadership, specifically being a different kind of leader. One that really focuses on the uh, people, the relationships of leadership and and what that really means to the success of the company. Our special guest today is the founder and CEO of ASAR Digital. They've been on the Inc. list twice. They have 160 employees. And we're meeting with the CEO, uh, Singh uh, Sanjeev. Uh, Singh and I talk about leadership in, in a kind of a different way. You might find some uh, interesting ways that he hires the right people and what he found works for his company. He also talks about why skills may not be the first thing that you'd be looking for. So you have to tune in to figure out exactly what he he looks for. But also we talk about, you know, building trust and and him deciding to empower and, and lead others in a different way because he was the bottleneck of the company. And you might be feeling the same thing as a leader today. My name is Gene Hammett. I am the host of Grow Think Tank, this podcast, but I'm also an executive coach. We coach fast growth companies to predictable, sustainable growth, and we also do that by helping their managers become leaders. And if you're curious about how you can invest in your employees the right way, then you want to make sure you keep tuning in to these episodes. If you want to take it a step further, you want to go and join us for a virtual conversation. We invite uh, the guests from the show. We invite, we bring in some special guests sometimes. Our next uh, episode will really give you something to think about the, the next virtual conversation specifically. So if you want to figure out what that is, go to coreelevation.com. That's our company forward slash virtual conversations. You can see what the next one is. We do a different one every month and you're invited to listen in and, and just kind of uh, you know soak it up. You can ask questions if you want, but you're not going to get pitched and you don't have to, to uh, you know, waste any time. You're going to you're going to learn something and you're going to be there with other CEOs of fast growth companies. Just go to coreelevation.com forward slash virtual conversations. Now, here's the interview with Singh. Singh, how are you? I'm doing good, Jin. Thank you so much. How are you? I am great. I'm excited to have another interview here for Growth Think Tank and to talk to you about unique brand of leadership that you bring to, to your world and your business and your success. Before we get into it, tell us about your company, ASR Digital. Yeah, so our company, ASR Digital, we um, specialize in the digital transformation for mid-sized growing companies. Uh, what we have seen that many of these companies, startup companies, when they start growing, in the beginning, they really don't pay attention to having a solid process and applications in place. And as yeah. you see in business, it's all about like, you know, uh, people, process, and technology, right? So then what we do is we come um, and help those companies say, hey, how do you set yourself for the growth with like solid business processes, solid systems in place uh, so that system and process is the last thing you need to worry about as you are going towards your growth journey. So our company, we are SAP partner. SAP is a market leader in the ERP software, as you might know. Right. Um, so we leverage SAP technology and SAP platform um, to help our customers in their digital transformation journey. I, I worked for Price, PricewaterhouseCoopers many, oh. many years ago, 20 plus years ago, before oh. I became an entrepreneur. And SAP was such a huge area back in the late 90s. And it hasn't died down because it's one of the, the most powerful you know, ERP platforms there is yeah. if you're in the right business. Um, I'm kind of curious on your, your kind of customers that you go after. Tell us a little bit more about the customers you serve and the problems they have before you are working with them. Sure. 
Yeah, so what we see is like many of uh, the companies, so, so most of our customers are more like mid-market. Um, and the way we define mid-market is anywhere, let's say like uh, $50 million to like, you know, seven, 800, like under a billion dollar. That's our uh, market space. Uh, and um, so in those companies, I can just tell you specifically the companies where like they have grown and then they are not able to cope up with their growth with the, all these disconnected systems they have in place. So they may have one system for the order manager, another for manufacturing, something else they have for the yeah. uh, logistics and shipment, okay? And since these systems don't talk to each other, so that a lot of the time people are just stressed and running around and trying to find information across the systems, across the organization. And this is where we come in uh, to give them that whole like single source of truth, all integrated business processes are part of one, one SAP system. So that's what we we specialize in helping our customers. Many times what happens we have seen is the company is like, you know, um, planning to go public, okay? And then, of course, when you go public, there are some requirements, some compliances you need to make sure. Um, so pretty much most of the public traded company, they're on SAP. So that becomes more like a default. Hey, let's implement SAP. Let's have all the processes in place. Um, so those are another kind of opportunities come to us. And then third area what we see is the whole growth, like new technology, like you see the online shopping, omni-channel, now latest is all about generative AI. There's everybody talking about generative AI, generative AI. And then businesses are looking for a solution. Hey, which partner, which platform we can use uh, to take advantage of these new uh, automation tools, new efficiency um, enablement tools. Um, so that's another area where we help our customers. I love technology. I will tell you that being being from that era of working yeah. with ERP systems yeah. and, and whatnot. Um, but we're not here to talk about technology. We're here to talk about leadership. Based on our research, and I know you've you've gone through uh, some some pre interviews with our team. You have 160 employees. You've made the ink list twice. You've actually climbed the second time you make it, which is hard to do because it's as your revenue grows, it gets harder to keep climbing that chart. Um, when you say a unique brand of leadership, what do you really mean by that? Is is what drives your success of a company? Yeah, so I'll tell you like so, um, for me. Um, at the end of the day, is all about relationship. Okay, when you say relationship with your customers, relationship with your prospects, relationship with your internal team members. Okay, at the end of the day, we are all human, right? And what drives us is our emotions. Okay, so the core attribute I would um, say for us to be successful and grow is that when we work with our customer, we really put ourselves in their shoes. What exactly is their pain? What exactly is driving them to come to us to do something what needs to make their life better? Okay, mm -hmm. So that is our fundamental way of really getting an understanding where they're coming from and what we need to do uh, to win their trust, what we need to do to win their business. And we don't look for a more like a short-term approach. We're always looking for a long-term becoming their trusted partner in the journey. And same thing goes for um, our uh, team here. So when we do hiring in our company, um, I never look for the skill sets. What I look for is the like the, the kind of your attitude, okay, uh -huh. not more like aptitude. Like, do you have something that more like a go-to mindset? That yes, anything is possible as long as you have the right attitude um, to learn and grow with the organization, okay. Um, so those are things I would say, like, you know, I look for people who are really believing in what we do for our customers and what we do here as a business. Okay. Uh, and that Let me ask a, you a question, Singh. Yeah, sure. Attitude. I wrote down attitude first here in my notes because I, oh. I, I, I take notes on everything. So I just, I want to go back to that. Have, was there a time before, I don't know, this business, maybe it's a different business, or maybe just when you early started, Sure. That you didn't hire based on attitude, and then you learned that that wasn't the best way to to find the next next uh, superstar. I I would say um, no. Like this is something. Um, so I started this company pretty late. You know, like when I was in my um, early forties when I started this company. Okay. And so my background is I used to work for SAP, um, and I have been part of many. Um, SAP implementations, okay? And that was one of my callings for me to start this business. When I saw people are like, you know, really not enjoying the work they're doing. They're just doing for the sake of doing the work because of course it pays the bills. 
And then what I saw was that at the end of the day, who is feeling the pain? The customers, their work is not being done, or even if it is being done, it is done at some different cost. Okay, so this is where I felt that, you know, you have to have people, like I was pretty much, and I always like enjoy the work I do, and I have a passion for what I do. And I always felt that if somebody has passion, they really enjoy what they're doing, I think they make a huge difference in the um, products, what they're producing, or the service they're providing to the customer. So this is what I knew from right from the beginning when I started this company. Of course, I could not hire a really like, you know, star performers because I was a startup company. I was just trying <laughs> to manage under the given resources. So what I said, you know what, let me hire people who have a right attitude and I'm going to train them SAP. So I was kind of literally like mm-hmm. hand holding them and teaching them everything. And that's the kind of culture I had built. So let's say my direct reports, when they had their um, direct reports, they make sure that they look for those kind of attributes so they can train them and make them productive enough. Now, Singh's been talking about hiring for attitude. You may have heard this in different ways, but the way I frame it with my clients is you want to identify the, the personal traits for the role, but you also want to take keep in mind the values of the business and make sure that they have these naturally. If they're bending their will to, to make sure they're proactive and that's one of your company values, it's going to be a mismatch. But you want to hire people who have uh, you know, demonstrated that in their natural behaviors of being proactive. My hope is that you won't ask them this directly because they'll always go, yeah, of course I'm proactive. But you will find an indirect way through questions and you'll be able to uh, give your team support on what you're looking for, whether it be the role, the personal traits of the role, but also the values of the company. And so you can assess people based on their attitude using the this method. Back to uh, Singh. It's a big lesson that I think a lot of uh, founders have to learn. And I've had to learn this too, because, you know, we look for people that can can do a certain function yeah. and we look for skills first. But I, I learned over time yeah. that it's not skills first. It, it really is that attitude. It's a really yeah. good way to put it. Um, when you're finding people with the right attitude, it's a lot easier to teach them SAP than to get them to have that passion that you were talking about or to be a bought into the mission of, of your customers and serving your customers. Um, so when you talk about being a different kind of leader, can you describe to me what kind of what drives you as a leader? So it's a lot of what I see is based on like my background. Okay. Like, you know, background of doing things um, under a lot of constraints. Okay. And that's what we do. Like when we go and execute SAP projects, like always have like constraints of timeline, constraints of budget constraints of availability of resources, either from us or from customer side. And then how do you make the most out of under given all these constraints? So that's the leader, leadership. You know, like they say this at Harvard, I studied the entrepreneurship of, uh, sorry, definition of entrepreneurship. Like, you know, you're pursuing for something, realizing that you may not have everything available to you, but still you're pursuing that opportunity and hoping or like looking for ways to make things work for you. That's what entrepreneurship is. Like, you know, always have that gap between what you want to do and what you have available. And how do you bridge that gap like with the constant work? So that's I would say like is our leadership style. Personally, I, leadership. I'm curious around that. You mentioned entrepreneurship and, and it's what drives me in my business. Yeah. Um do you also hire people that have an attitude toward entrepreneurship? Have a of sense course. of ownership around the work that they do? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. See the entrepreneurship is like is when I say entrepreneur, I don't not necessarily mean in terms of business, like ability to start organization, start the business. Right? <laughs> Entrepreneurship is all about pursuing something and you know that you may not have all the resources available to you. Still, you're trying to make it work. Yeah. How do you make that work? That mindset is entrepreneurship mindset. I see that quite often in, in the yeah. pattern of people. One of the things I love about having this podcast is is interviewing a thousand people plus that are hiring people and creating value from from limited resources, like a higher value to the market. Right. Exactly. And and you're you're giving a great example of this because you're hiring people with with what you the attitude you want. You're training them SAP, which is very valuable skills. But I would imagine with that you don't have that much turnover because you are bringing in people that feel like they fit inside this. Um, what's the benefit of this different kind of leadership you've been talking about? Yes, yeah, so I think before I will, um, it's not all rosy. I'll be very honest with you. Even with that, 
that approach and mindset, I have failed many times in identifying the people because there's so much you can know in the interview. Like you talk to the person once or twice, and then you make assumption based on the answers they gave you based on their um, body language. But then you soon realize that whatever you presumed, uh, those values are not aligned. Uh, but I believe in failing fast. Okay, as I will make a mistake, I'll accept my mistake and then just take a decision. We just don't just carry on just because we made some mistake. So, okay, so that's the kind of um, in our approach. We know what you're looking for. We may not get right all the time, but as long as like okay, identify when that happens, take a decision and move on. So hiring people, I would say, is one of the, our toughest uh, tasks in our company. Like, how do you identify? people with those attributes, something you cannot really find out. Like you can make sure by asking questions, but it comes with the time. Well, I, I think you're not alone because a lot of people that sit in this same seat, if you will, yeah. behind the interviewer with me yeah. are failing fast too. And they're, yeah. they're one of their biggest struggles is hiring people. So is there anything that you've done that you feel like allows uh, ASAR to stand out, to attract the talent that you need to be successful in the marketplace? I think what I have seen is the like word of mouth is the best way. Like, you know, would, when you, your team member is talking about like why um, anybody should join SR Digital rather than like, you know, we claim through our advertising and job posts and anybody can write whatever they like. But if when somebody else is talking about you, I think that goes a long way in my opinion. We've been talking about attracting talent with Singh. And I wanted to kind of jump in here because I wanted to share this with you. You know, in dating, I heard uh, someone say, well, if you want to attract someone of status and someone that, that you feel like you can live your life with, are you being the person that they would be attracted to? Now, this isn't about dating advice, but I, I use that as, as an analogy because you want to look at your company with a critical eye. Is your company being the kind of company that top talent is attracted to? Do you offer the opportunities for growth? Do you offer the, the training for growth? Do you give them leadership training? Do you give them hard skills training and technology or AI? Because if you're looking to attract top, top talent, you've got to be the company that they want to work for. I know that's a very short uh, way to phrase this, but you have to look at it. Only you can judge this. You can have outside people, but you, you've got to, to really look at things. Look for reasons why your company is not attracting top talent and address those proactively. Back to Singh. When you look back at your own leadership, we've all had inflection points, moments where things are different. For you, it might've been going to Harvard and learning through case studies, or it could have been something else that you, you had to endure. I know for me, it was losing everything was the biggest, but then there's been smaller inflection points throughout my life and career as a leader and entrepreneur. Um, could you share with us one inflection point that you feel like really represents who you are as a leader today? So I will tell you my biggest inflection point was like when we started and we started doing well, right? So at that time, I'm pretty much owning everything, like our every customer engagement, our every sales opportunity, every project I'm driving myself. I feel in full control. I feel I'm doing everything, whatever is needed to make everything successful. And that's how we are like one success after another success. But then comes the point where like, <laughs> I'm becoming the bottleneck. Yeah. Right? So that was my inflection point. How do I start trusting my people to run with things without me being involved? Okay. And that was kind of biggest, uh, I would say lesson for me that how do I step back and let them do accepting things will not go as I would have done myself if I had I um, run that um, cycle, but still I say, you know what, we'll accept and learn from our mistakes. I should be prepared that yes, the kids have started walking, they will fall, okay? As long as I'm there to support them when they need our help. So that was a big uh, inflection point, like how do you let your team start taking the ownership and you can start taking the back. Many times I have seen even that has turned out to be a uh, mistake in some areas where I may not have fully thought that the team is capable of running with this and I have had to go back and take over. Okay. But then again, after setting things up, my tendency again is step back, let them run with this. 
I think we've all had to learn this the hard way too. It's one of our yeah. inflection points in leadership because yeah. as founders, we're so entrenched into the success of the business and we know what's going on and we feel like we need to pull it together. But there is a time when you've you've got to let go and you've got to become a better leader by letting go um, and and supporting them through the growth. Is there anything that we haven't touched on today that you feel like is important to the conversation of being a different kind of leader? You know, one thing I'll say is like from the leadership perspective, um, many times like you as a person have to really carry that energy in the organization. Like if you are passionate, if you are charged up, if you show that you have the vision, you know what exactly you're doing. I think whole organization feels really charged up and motivated. Okay. Mm. So it's very important for a leader to have that kind of a mindset and that I know exactly where I'm doing and I know exactly where we are going and where are we taking the organization. Because then people, everybody in the else is looking at you. Okay. You cannot afford to, I don't know, we'll see, let's see, we'll try this. If this works, you have to really, <laughs> that's the responsibility of sitting on the chair. I would say. And you can't outsource that to someone else and empower no, someone no, no. else. Yeah. Hopefully everyone does want, has the same kind of energy and charge up. But I agree, right. agree with you that we can't, we can't, you know, delegate the energy and the passion that we have for our business and our customers and the success and growth to others. We have to lead the charge there. So great reminder uh, saying, thank you for being here on the podcast and sharing your My wisdom. Pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Gene, for having me. I love interviews about leadership, especially companies that are you know, really working hard, they're growing, they're evolving, and they're continuing to, to really treat their people the right way. Uh, he said one of the biggest challenges he has is attracting talent. I bet you can agree with that. And you want to make sure that you're not only attracting talent, but you're also leading them powerfully. If you have any questions about what that, uh, what is missing inside your culture, inside your, your performance as it comes to leadership, make sure to reach out to us. Uh, just send me a question, gene at genehammett.com. Happy to help you. And maybe even steer you in the right direction. Maybe we can even get on call if you're interested in, in talking about your specific situation. Happy to, to make that happen. When you think of growth and you think of leadership, think of growth thinking. As always, leave courage. We'll see you next time.